have this beautiful moonfish. Okay, before we get started talking about moonfish, one of the things I'd like to talk about quickly is the fresh fish that we have on board the ship. Okay? A lot of times when you travel on cruise ships, because they're moving from port to port, country to country, they take on supply at the beginning of the cruise, expecting to get all the way through. So about 80-85% of the food products are frozen on board the ships. One of the things I'm very happy and fortunate to be able to have here on board the ship is fresh fish for everybody. Wow. Okay, so throughout the next seven days, you're going to be having pretty much 100% fresh fish in the dining room every single evening. Okay, the only fish that I bring on board that's not fresh is salmon because it doesn't come locally. But the fish that we do have on board, yellowfin tuna, mahi-mahi, wahoo, papio, and this beautiful moonfish all came yesterday to the ship. We brought on around 2,100 pounds of fresh fish. Okay, it comes on the hole just like this. And then we have one gentleman on board who's our uh, one of our butcher chefs who takes care of cutting all our meats and fish every day for us. Okay, so tonight we have on our menu a feature called moonfish, which is a local fish. Uh, not too many people are familiar with it. Um, if anybody is from Hawaii, I don't know if anybody from Hawaii today, today maybe, no, okay. Or the west coast of the United States, sometimes on menus you'll see the word opa. Okay, opa is moonfish, okay. This moonfish alone it weighs just over 100 pounds, maybe about 110 pounds. Honestly, it's one of the smaller fish. <laughs> On the average, they go around 200 pounds. Okay. The biggest, the one that I've researched the most anyways, to come across, the biggest catch I've ever had for moonfish was off the big island of Hawaii at 600 pounds. Wow. Okay. The 600 pounder? Yeah. Probably 30, 40 years old, I would think, I guess. I don't know, maybe several years, I, I guess. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, the fish, the local fish we have on board right now is coming from the two Moto Islands area. That's where the fishing is going on. Uh, this moonfish is actually quite a unique fish. Uh, it looks like a large disc. Okay, believe it or not, it swims vertically in the ocean. It's an open water fish. It does not school with other moonfish. So when you're out in the open sea, the only chance you'll ever see to see a moonfish if you come across yellowfin tuna. Yellowfin tuna tend to be protection for the moonfish, and the moonfish in the open sea just outside the reef here are a great prey for the shark. They love to eat it. So the moonfish, a lot of times, will hide within schools of yellowfin tuna. So typically speaking, if you go fishing for yellowfin tuna, there's a possibility that you might catch one of these. Okay? Swimming depths, anywhere up to about 600 feet from the surface down. And food source, uh, they typically eat squid, okay? Sometimes krill, I've read about them eating krill as well, but locally around here, mainly squid. <laughs> Being that it's a disc fish, um, it has the same bone structure as halibut or flounder or something along those lines, sole. So you have one main spine that goes right down through the center of the fish, and then you have the pin bones that go this way across the fish, which separate out four fillets. So you have two on the top and two on the bottom. The top two fillets are going to be used for dinner this evening for everybody. Okay? Yeah. Believe it or not, I'm going to yield roughly 70 portions out of this one fish. Wow. Okay, I do have two on board, so we can cover everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but we do uh, roughly about 70 portions. The bottom two fillets are a little bit of a challenge to work with because with it being an open water swimming fish, the silver skin and sinew and the muscle tissue build up very heavily in the bottom of the fish. And so these two fillets tend to be very, very tough. So what I will do with that is remove those from the bone later on this evening, cut them into small pieces, and use it as garnish and soups. Okay? If I was to take it actually put it on the grill and try to grill it, it would be very tough to eat. And it would be unpleasant and it would be a lot of complaints and I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Bone structure, we take the bones afterwards, we cut the bones up as well, and then we put them in the soup pot to make stocks and bouillons and things like that as bases. So we have pretty much 100% yield on this when it comes to cooking. Okay, so there's not a lot of waste. One cool thing I like to show, here in French Polynesia, uh, commercial fishing as I know it, I'm from the United States, does not exist here. So you don't have large trawlers that go out to fish tons and tons of fish at a time and bring it back and put it on the open market to sell or export. Here you go out fishing and bring it back, you put it on the local market, you sell, you go out the next day, you go fishing again. Okay, So we're very fortunate here. So that's why we're able to have the size and variety of fish available to us on a weekly basis. When typical fishermen around here go out to go fishing in the afternoon, such as this time of day, they'll take their 30-foot boat out, Maybe two or three guys will go out. 
they decide they want to go fishing for mahi or they want to go fishing for wahoo or tuna. And instead of having all these big fishing poles and trolling along, they actually just have spools of fishing line with hooks attached to it. The spools are hooked to the side of the boat. They drop the, the bait with the hook off the side of the boat and they just let it sit. When a fish grabs the bait and starts to run, there's a buoy that will attach to it and the fish will drag the buoy until it tires out and then they are physically pull the line in. Okay, So it could take a little while to do it. But the interesting thing is with the variety of fish and the quantity of fish in the open sea here, if you go out early in the morning, let's say sun up to go fishing, you can come home for lunch with about 500 pounds of fish on board. Okay, So it's a lot of fun and it's very interesting to do. These hooks are kind of cool. I like to show that. This I found actually I found this last week in the mouth of the fish, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to make sure uh, we double check to make sure it's not there. I don't want to get stuck with it. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to start by making a cut down through the center of the fish here to separate the two fillets. Then I'm going to take my knife and run it across the bottom of the or the top of the fish, all the way up over the top of the head, back around the gill, and connect the line. And by doing that, that separates the fillet. And then what I'll do is take my knife and go straight down the pin bones and follow that out and then remove the whole fillet. And at that point it should be about 100% boneless. Okay? Then we'll take and skin it and then I'll send it down to the butcher shop and the butcher will then portion it and have it ready for dinner service tonight. Wow. So the featured fish in the main dining room on deck 5 and here on the grill on deck 8 will be this fish tonight that you see here. that I don't do is I don't scale this fish before I cut it. A lot of times you'll scale the fish because you want to be able to cut through the skin and through the and to be able to fillet it. We don't do that with this. If you were to do this, it's one hell of a mess to clean up afterwards when you're done. <laughs> so we're going to take the knife and we're going to pass it straight down through the skin. So straight down through the center of the tail. I'm going to go back up to the top again and work my way down just to the point where I touch the tip of the knife to the bones. You can see that the bone or the knife is jumping across the bones of the fish. I'm not pressing too hard because if I break that bone, we will not have boneless fish for dinner. <laughs> Back on this side here, we're going to cut in. Right to the top of the head. And of course, the biggest trick to this is having a sharp knife. Taking cut across the tail here. Come back in and with the tip of the knife, start running it right down our beautiful pin bones. Working my way all the way to the back of the fish where the spine is, hold the top of the head. I'm gonna follow this all the way around. There. Straight back to the top. Take our small fillet knife, come across the top of the bones. Fish. <clears throat> I'll turn it like that. It's 
easier to see. Okay, so it's got a beautiful kind of a pinkish color. When we cook it, it'll be more of an opaque color when it comes off the grill. Simple salt, black pepper, olive oil. That's all we're going to do with it. The flavor of the fish will come through beautifully. It's a very mild flavor fish. Medium oil content. We cook it about medium. No more than about medium. It starts to dry out a little bit. Okay, so that's Chef's recommendation for this evening. <clears throat> Last thing I'll do. Spin this around on the ice. So you can see how I cut it out. Wow. Okay. Wow. Will you get that same slab of meat on the, on the bottom side? Yes, sir. Yep. So basically I did what I, what I said is I cut right down to where the spine is, came up around the head. You can see where I followed out the knife with the pin bones, and then you have your boneless fillet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Woo! How long have you been on a chef on this particular day? I've been with the company on and off since 2011. Right. Very cool. <laughs> yes, sir. What's that? Awesome. Right here? No, this is just a, uh, it's actually bone. Okay. Yeah. So can someone eat the eye tonight? You can. Go ahead. She would be happy to. Ha, 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 ha.